day, I was gone for a minute, but I'm back now. Sit the, sit the back down. Sit like everybody now, day Hollywood. I was like that now. I'ma show you, show you how to act now. I'ma show him how to act. I'ma show you, show you, show you. I'ma show him how to act. Okay, now pitch a little Bobby, just a younger run around with his man's hands and his hands feeling like a man. Run, 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 put him, put him. I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. The Jags will need to be on top of their game if they want to come away with win number nine on the season. It's the Seahawks going up against the Jaguars. Larry, we welcome our viewers to Duval County, the northern part of Florida, and the largest city in the Sunshine State as EA Sports coverage of the NFL takes us to Everbank Field here in Jacksonville. A few minutes prior to us coming on air, this crowd was jolted into action with the introduction of these Jaguars. They're set for football as the Jags are ready to match up with the Seattle Seahawks. And they're going to go soft on the corners. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. So the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. And now the ball's out. Fumble near midfield. And the Jags grab it. And they'll set up shop in enemy territory at the 45-yard line. T.J. Yeldon, and he's going to get this inside the 30. That good for 19 and a first down. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only they're controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to linebacker spot, the secondary spot getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. It's a gain of five on the play, and it's a second down. And the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield, and oftentimes it's quite a surprise to the guys playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. First rider from LSU, it's Leonard Fournette. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that one looked pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. On first and 10, here's Bortles. Flush to his right. And he'll slide down to avoid the tackle. Back-to-back 11-yard -back gains, and they've got another first down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. inside the five-yard line. Cam Chancellor able to collapse the pocket and drop him for a loss of three.
Second and goal to go now. Here's Ivory. They're able to get a couple here, but won't get across the plane as they stop him right around the one. So now things get interesting on third and goal from the one. This almost becomes a Darwinian call, doesn't it? Almost survival of the fittest here. I know we can go all cliche. I'll go ahead and do it. Who wants it more here? Who has a better leverage at the line of scrimmage? Let's go and see what happens. Here we go. Green, 90. Green, 90. Go, go, save. Third and goal. Can the offense punch it in here from the one? And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. Only a yard that time, so now a decision to be made here on fourth and goal. So on fourth down, on comes the Jaguars. Jason Myers now for the field goal try. From the right hash and a bit of a tight angle. And Myers able to knock it through. And the Jaguars grab a 3-0 lead. So the folks here in the stands this afternoon, they're happy about that one. Their guys get the early advantage after the opening drive field goal. And they should be happy. Their guys look good getting down the field, and that's got to give them hope that good things are in store here today. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. And last time they coughed it up, led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though? Oh, when they only gave up the field yeah. goal, and they were able to trot back out on the field and start this drive, a little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown. But they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession. The coach will just be relieved, though, if they recoup with a score here, right? I think coach will be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it downfield, punching the end zone without turning it over. And it worked his way across the 30 to the 32. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave them with a second and three. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. Second down following the run. Defense really showing respect to the deep ball here, playing off the receivers. On second down, Lacey, and he'll be brought down right around the 37. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Wilson. Escaping the pressure right. And some space here. And he'll be out of bounds up near the 45 at the 44. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Okay, he's not going to get the first down, but this is still a nice job of buying some time and then running to get to the sideline and get out of bounds and avoid the big hit. The first update now from a game going on in Cleveland, and it's the Browns out to the early advantage. We'll keep you updated on that one as it progresses. Lacey gets the handoff from Wilson, and he'll only get a yard, maybe two, up to the 46. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. Offense just a yard away from the line they need to gain. Third down. They'll try and run for it. Here's Lacey. And he's got the first down before being taken down at the 46. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Room here to run. And he 
gets this inside the 35-yard line. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. So right now what I'm seeing, I'm seeing an offense is just firing off the ball a lot quicker than they can react. And not only that, they're sustaining the blocks too. I'm seeing guys get six, seven yards downfield before there's even a hint of contact. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Now they'll throw it with Wilson. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And he is going to lose yardage here. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yardage. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. ground this is Lacey looking to find a lane but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage no gain that time but it leaves him with third and 11 coming up play of the drive coming up and certainly not an easy one on third and long. There's Wilson to throw. And he fires one but incomplete. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group and we just saw it there on that play. He came in, made the contact just as he's trying to haul it in. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. I tell you, it's not easy kicking field goals in the best of conditions. Yet in a downpour like we're in right now, it makes it that much harder. And sure enough, they can't convert here. now on first down. And he's got the rookie. It's D.D. Westbrook. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 16 yards that time on the pickup for the Jags and a first down. This is Ivory. And he'll bring this one inside the 35. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. Fournette and this time not quite to the 30 it'll be down at the 31 yard line give him three yards and a fresh set of downs but well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far and after that last run not much is going to change in that area he hasn't been able to get anything going and really the offensive line not helping him much throwing on first down is Bortles Oh, incomplete. The rookie had it and lost it there. And it'll be second down. Pretty nice coverage there, but a missed opportunity for an interception. Let's face it, a lot of these defenders, they've got it all. Speed, athleticism, hands, a little bit questionable.
second down. Here's Fournette. And he's got some space here. And he's brought down after a good game. All told, it's an even 30 and a first down. But there's a reason he was the first running back taken. You saw the ability there, the ability to be physical and get downhill. And how about him breaking off a nice game there? There's some Adrian Peterson comparisons out there now. That's high praise. Do you think that they're warranted? Running style, very similar. They'll try to punch it in with Fournette. And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. Now that was a terrific play. We're down here near the goal line, and only one word comes to mind for me, and that's overwhelm, because they absolutely overwhelmed the offensive line. He came free and made the hit in the backfield. Portals on the give to Fournette, and he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Jacksonville. A great effort there with his 16th touchdown of the year. And the Jaguars add on to their lead. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10-zip. Here's Myers now to kick it away. This is taken just shy of the 10 here. And he'll be knocked down sideways. Coming up later tonight, a reminder, one of the best rivalries going. We'll have the Ravens and Steelers for you at 8.30 Eastern. And then tomorrow on Monday night, another divisional matchup. This time it's the Pats heading down to Miami to take on the Dolphins. Nice two for there. And no press coverage here. They are backing off in the secondary. They begin the drive with Lacey. And he'll be tackled just past the 35 at the 36. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. On second down, Wilson. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. Throwing is Wilson. And he takes a shot on the release, as this will be incomplete. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. Now John Ryan, 12th year in the league, on to punt it away. As he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. He gets this away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And this will be out of bounds at the what here? The 12-yard line. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And for them, a touchdown their last goal around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked. But you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Seven. Michael Bannon in there to sack him, and that is 10 for him now on the year. taken down here at about the 10. Three yards on the gain. They're going to need to do better on this next play. It'll be third and 12. 
some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make the play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. Throwing his Bortles on third down. That's into the hands of Westbrook over the middle. And he'll be about a full yard shy of the 20 at the 19-yard line. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. Brad Nortman in his sixth year in the league on to punt it away as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. Only two punts for him last week in the loss as he gets this one away. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Seahawks will have great field position to start this drive. They take over on the short side of the field. Meanwhile, a second quarter score from Carolina. And it's the Panthers there out to the early advantage. And we'll keep you abreast of how that one shakes out. They start the drive on the ground with Lacey. Takes to midfield, but no further. Just a yard there. I think they want to start getting back into this game. It behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. take this one down inside the 45 and he's able to get most of what he needed on the carry there seven yards on the gain and it's third and two now And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. to play here in the first half. Back with more from Jacksonville. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this. And they're going to go soft on the corners. They stay on the ground on first down with Lacey. And he's going to get this inside the 30. And a nice carry there of 15 yards. That's another nice run. And I have to tell you, some of the coaches that I played for, their philosophies were always different when they see a guy running the ball well. Some of them wanted to immediately go to play action and throw it now because it's wide open. But other coaches said, you know something? Until they stop him, that big boy's going to keep getting the football. And that might be the direction that they're going to go right now. Down right around the 25. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense. Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. time for the tailback and down inside the 15 he goes a nice pick up there of 11 yards and it'll move the sticks first down now but the clock continues to move and he'll give it here to his running back and nothing doing he's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage call it no gain on the play and it'll be second down and while there is no gain on that run we do know coaches whose identity is rooted in 
taking it almost to the limit and then changing things up on you down the stretch. I think we're getting really close to that point in time, though, where the identity may have to go out the window. And they've got to go a little bit faster in order to try and win the game. The offense on third down tonight, they've hit two for four thus far. They're looking at third and a few inches. They'll run. This is Lacey. And he will have the first down before he's brought down at the three. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. As the clock will stop with 18 seconds to go in the first half. Now this will be the ninth play on this drive. They come out here in the eye. First and goal at the three-yard line. And he's across the chalk into the end zone. Touchdown, Seahawks. A great play there as the first half is winding down. And the Seahawks have made this a one-score game. And they're back within a field goal. It's 10-7 now. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The Jaguars offense now heads back onto the field. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. QB split out wide now. They're in the Wildcat. On the direct snap, Ivory. Even with that broken tackle, can't go very far. Stop short of the 30. A gain of three, second down. I once had a defensive player in the NFL tell me, if I beat and dominate the guy across from me, I'm helping my team. Well, winning one-on-one -on -one battles is always a part of the game. But when you have good team defense, as we just saw there, of one broken tackle, but he didn't get away because the rest of the guys arrived to put him on the ground. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. Meanwhile, over in Houston, and the 49ers are out to the early lead. That one tight to this point, and you'd have to imagine it'll stay tight throughout. Out come the Jaguars now as they'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have the lead, now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had an ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? Rush coming, and he's taken down. Bobby Wagner in there to get him, and that's sack number eight for him on the year. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. Second down, here's Bortles. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. to his receiver Westbrook. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. Here's Brad Nortman now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. Fielded at the 33. We'll call this a 41-yard punt, seven 
on the return. And it'll be Seahawk football first and ten. Top pass the 45 to the 47. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down. That fits the bill. Now Wilson. Out to the right here to Wilson. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. One Wilson to another for a Seahawk first down. Defense really showing respect to the deep ball here, playing off the receivers. On first down, Wilson. It's caught, Rocket. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And a nice gain of 21 yards. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. First and ten, it's Wilson. The rocket with a grab over the middle. And he is knocked down from the side. Twelve more yards there and another first down. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong arm guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. Now it's Wilson. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? Throwing the out route. Incomplete. That's Wilson. And all the way down inside the five to the four. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. They come out here in the eye. Throwing again here, Wilson. And he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. Tyler Lockett hitting double digits with his 10th touchdown of the season. And the Seahawks are able to strike for six. And that makes it 14-10. The kickoff unit is out on the field and they will send this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. They'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. Here comes the Jaguars' offense as they get set here. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. They'll bring the tight end in motion right here. On the direct snap, this will be Fournette. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And Leonard Fournette impressing there with that run. It's hard to believe that no Jacksonville Jaguar has broken 1,000 yards since Maurice Jones drew in 2011. I think Leonard Fournette could be that guy. Even with the ankle injury last year at LSU, still averaged six and a half yards per carry. And absolutely intimidated opposing defenses. A lot of guys simply didn't want to tackle him. Now this time, Bortles will throw. Caught right side. It's Lewis. And I think we've got a hold here. It's a five-yard pickup for the moment. Let's see what our referee says.
Bortles to throw on second down. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Deshaun Shedd. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. That was an interception, but on the field, the guys who are picking it off, they're not saying that. What word are they using? It's Oski. And that means catch the ball and go the other way. That's your vernacular. I've never heard anybody say Oski. Ask around. They'll tell you. It's good, and it's 21-10. Elsewhere, a third-quarter score. And how about the Bears? They're up right now to this point. And we'll keep an eye on that one as our game goes along here. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. And fresh off the pick six. They've got to forget about that quickly. In this case now, the guy throwing the ball, he's got to be like what we talk about with defensive backs who get beat for a long touchdown. Short-term memory, right back out there doing the things that he does best and knowing that taking care of the ball is paramount is his opportunity. It all comes back to those defensive backs for the formal D, former DB, right? I don't know where that comes from. It yeah. just kind of emerges out of me for some it's reason. It's deep in there, right? Yeah. <laughs> the Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. take this up over the 40 to about the 41. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. Here we go now. Three, 90. Three, 90. Now Bortles throwing on second down. And the Seahawk defense gets to him and they bring him down. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. Now the offense lining up first and 10. After the penalty, it's Fournette. Weaving through traffic, and now he's free. Touchdown, Jaguars. A big play there. His second touchdown of the game, 17th on the year. And the Jaguars have cut it back within a score. And they'll get set here looking for the two-point conversion. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. With that mistake, they only need one yard. And that could make all the difference, right? When you're talking about goal line play, where inches count, move it up one entire yard, that could make all the difference for the guys Black trying to get the rail. points. Bortles. And he's got it. So the try for two successful. And with it, they're back within a field goal. Here's Myers now to kick it away. This is taken just shy of the 10 here. Solid return. Pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. And now whistles and a flag. And I think we got a jump here. A little antsy on the left side of the line. Yeah, I think they got the guy in the end. I think they got the DN there on that one. And let's face it, he is so amped up. Wanting to get a good get-off on the snap. 
jump too quickly. And no press coverage here. They are backing off in the secondary. Out of the gun. Here's Wilson. This complete to Lockett. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. A really good pickup of 28 yards. That looked like a pretty good route combination there because you've got to find a way to clear the guy running the drag because when you do, you just put the ball on him and then let him run. Yeah, he's got some space. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Well, let's see who this is on. A little too aggressive defensively, and the flag comes out. And no one trying to cover is going to like a call going against them, but you have to like the effort there. Went for the interception, just unable to get it, and the flag did come out. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. And he comes back with one complete. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. And now inside the red zone, the offense will operate. And it's first and goal now, but still 10 yards to go. And this play doesn't go anywhere. Backwards, losing yardage to the 11. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Well, forget about finding a lane there. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Probably fortunate he's able to hold on to the football. Blaze, he'll try again. Back now in Jacksonville. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. And this offense on third down today, they've converted three out of five thus far. They're looking at a third and goal here. To throw is Wilson. Now they go screen. It's complete. And they'll go backwards here. Losing yardage to the 14. And a loss of three to bring up four. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. And Walsh able to convert it as his kick is good. And that will double their lead as it's up to six. So they get the three here, but you wonder whether that's going to be enough. Yeah, I mean, you've now made it so they need a touchdown rather than a field goal to catch them. But you're right. If they've gotten six out of that drive, this would be a much different game. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right, to be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They may have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville and a first down. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Throwing now is Bortles. Pressure comes. He's taken down by the Seahawk defense. The rookie from Michigan State, Malik McDowell. And it'll make this a second and long. Now 
Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? And he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped, but I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. To throw, it's Bortles. Looking long for Westbrook. Got a man, it's caught inside the 10. And he is down deep into Seattle territory. A big third down play there for the Jags. 46 yards. And now the offense operates in the red zone. The pigskin on the seven-yard line now. It's first and goal. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. T.J. Yeldon, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Jags are an extra point away from taking the lead. making this treacherous, but the extra point is good, and with it, it'll give him the lead. Here's Myers now to kick it away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to come back onto the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point the kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. Too bad. I don't know about <laughs> that. <laughs> Super tall. <laughs> Here's Wilson, eluding the pressure right. Give him a couple on the scramble. It's second down. How about a tip of the cap to the defense? They're working against a very mobile quarterback, but all day long they've kept him under wraps. And on that play, they held him to a short gain. And they're going to go soft on the corners. On second down, here's Wilson. And the grab made by Doug Baldwin. First down, Seahawks. Wilson to Baldwin. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage. And that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area. So you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. That is incomplete. Well, he'll definitely say that that's one he should have held on to. But when you're playing in elements like this, sometimes those bullet passes, those ones with a little bit of pace on them, they can be difficult to hold on to. Second down following the incompletion. Throwing again. Wilson. Baldwin with it over the middle. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. One of the selling points at the in route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. And the Seahawks on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and eight. Now a handoff here to his running back. Looking for an opening, not much there. He'll get it to the 39. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. Here's John Ryan now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. 
taken in at the 22. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. They'll score that a 36-yard punt. And the Jaguars go on offense first down and 10. They're on to the fourth quarter now, by the way, at Bank of America Stadium in Carolina. And the Panthers definitely think an upset. They lead in that one. Remember to keep an eye on the ticker, of course, at the bottom of your screen for updates on that game and others around the NFL. Some good games going on in the early window. This might be the best of the bunch. They'll try and run some clock with Fournette. And just a short gain that time as they're able to get him down. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Brandon, you know how many times we've done games, and at the start of the fourth quarter, we see both teams hold up the four fingers, fourth quarter is ours. Well, how about this drive? You saw the four fingers for four-minute offense, and this offensive line has really hunkered down and established themselves. Now, this is where they say, put the game on our shoulders, we'll lead the way, right? No doubt about it, and let me tell you, if you're a running back, all you want to do is get behind those big fellas, have a little vision, and find some space. And a solid way to do that on the first play of the drive there. Working from the gun, it's Bortles. And the Seahawks defense gets to him and they bring him down. Cliff Averill in there to drop him for his 11th sack of the year. Following the sack, third and long for Bortles and the Jags. Shotgun now for Bortles. And he's going to go down again. Cliff Averill in there to get him. And that's sack number 12 for him on the year. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. Checking in on Houston. It's in the fourth quarter there. Now you saw the score at the bottom of your screen a moment ago. We got a good one going on there. A win would be just their second of the year if they could hold on. Time for a break. Here's Brad Nortman now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he uncorks a beauty. Best of the day. And this will be taken at the 13. It looked like he might beat that last man. He doesn't, though, but it goes as a 32-yard return. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Defense really showing respect to the deep ball here, playing off the receivers. Now a first down carry, it's Lacey. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. It'll be a loss of a yard, and it'll be second and 11. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. And he'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. And the Seahawks on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third down and 12. And again, this time to the tailback. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 41. And now the Jags defense deciding to call a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And he can't get a throw away. He's 
take him down. Malik Jackson with a great push up front. He picks up the sack and a loss of eight. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. They're up by one. They have the football. The key here, just don't do anything silly, right, Charles? That's exactly right. And you know all the admonitions as they ran out there. Take care of the ball. Secure everything. Be tight in everything that you do. No let up. No crazy plays. And they can go home with a victory. <laughs> Let's see here if they can do all those things and hang on to this victory. Fournette. Oh, no. He lost the football. And the offense will get this one back. Boy, that could have been catastrophic at this late stage of the game. But they avoid disaster. And now the Seahawks are going to take a timeout here on defense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. The fumble, but they're able to maintain possession. Now it's second down. Carry for the pullback. This is Tommy Bohanna. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. And now the Seahawks are going to call another timeout. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back. The Jaguars on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. This is third and 7. Here we go now. Green, 90. Green, Turns 90. the man in motion left. On third down, yelled it. Just a yard on the run there, and that's going to bring us to a fourth down. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. And this will split the uprights. It's right down the middle, and that'll move their lead up to four now. So they recover the fumble but could not take advantage of the short field. They do get three. And no one ever turns down three points going up on the board, but the offense will go to the sidelines wondering what if... While the defense on the other side, they'll celebrate holding them to just a field goal after giving up such bad field position. And yeah, the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. One possession game, <laughs> time very much a factor. How does the offense handle this situation? Well, in a lot of cases, they should be somewhat relaxed. And I know that's counterintuitive because this is a pressure situation. But this is Friday practice every week of the season. You go over this situation, Having to go downfield, limited timeouts, got to get out of bounds and keep the drive going and set yourself up. Defensively, you can't just lay back and let them do whatever they want. So it is a cat and mouse deal here. How much pressure will the defense bring and how much pressure can the offense handle? We're going to find out. And no press coverage here. They are backing off in the secondary. He's back to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that's going to be incomplete. 12 seconds left. The intended target, Doug Baldwin. That'll bring up second down. They have not gotten him going at all. Tried to spark something there with a longer throw. Unable to complete it. But you have to keep trying. He's one of their best playmakers. No matter what it says on the scoreboard, you're always trying to get him the football. Back to throw. Flush to his right. And this is caught. It's Jimmy Graham. And he's going to be out of bounds, but able to take it inside the 40-yard line. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. Shot for Wilson. He's going to let it fly. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over.
Well, Charles, a pretty exhilarating finish to the end of this ball game. At the end, the Hail Mary prayers, though, they went unanswered. Could have won it, but couldn't get it done. Almost fell schoolyard or playground, didn't it? You know, you remember when you called that play? Everybody just go long <laughs> and try and find someone open. They gave it a shot, but unable to successfully complete it. So for the Jags, it's a very important win as they move to 9-4 and four now on the year. And they'll get to stay put for a few days as they'll host the Houston Texans next week. Meanwhile, for Seattle... It's a loss that could have implications on the playoff race as they fall to 9-4. and four. And they'll have a chance at redemption next week at home against the Los Angeles Rams. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The Jaguars are winners here as we say so long from Jacksonville.